it. Oh. You're natural with this stuff. Nice job. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> the heat from your computer is not wasted if you need to heat your home. Satoshi Nakamoto. Last year and the year before we were already here and the first year the Bitcoin Amsterdam conference started, we did the tulips. 3,200 tulips grown with Bitcoin heat and the goodbye was great. Everyone was throwing the tulips in the air. But tulips, of course, are a waste of energy, so we had to do better. More about that later. It was a beautiful pellet. It grew during the conference and it was amazing. Last year, we were there with Adam Beck heating this conference with old ASICs, S9s, and you could see how we decentralized the network because people in Europe are using these as home heaters. Thousands of people are using this to warm their rooms with electric energy instead of burning fossils. Now, the next step is we are going to decentralize further with the super small miners. And that's what's being shown at the entrance when you walk into this conference. So if you look, we've been assembling thousands and thousands of these little miners across the globe. And especially for this conference, we wanted to build something nice. So we designed a really, really nice Bitcoin B consisting of little bit axes. And how does that look when you actually assemble it? Because it's a shitload of work. <laughs> and the community, of course, always helps out. So thank you again for helping us making this possible. 121 little miners currently being distributed. The first ones have already left the building. And they will fly all over the world being plugged into the Bitcoin network later. As you can see, this was not just a few days of work, it was a lot of days of proof of work. And it was really nice. So we've been building the last couple of years. We have been working on decentralizing the network on locations where it makes sense. And how does that look? It makes a lot of sound. A lot, a lot of sound. So what you actually want to do is you want to make it silent. And we build a lot, a lot of boxes. And these boxes, they dampen the sound, but can also channel the heat in buildings. Or you can warm your clothes with it, so you don't need a clothes dryer. <laughs> and what you see is that throughout the Netherlands and throughout Europe, a lot of people have been building this themselves because it was actually open source. So everything we've built was being shared in the communities and people started building it themselves. And therefore, they could mine some sets and, of course, also spend them, for instance, in Arnhem. Why is this important? Governments are good at cutting off the heads of centrally controlled networks like Napster, but pure peer-to-peer -peer networks like Nutella and Tor seem to be holding their own. Satoshi Nakamoto again. So we built decentralized. We built in locations where it actually makes sense. We built where people need heat and where they have access. Access electricity from their solar panels, where otherwise they have to pay if they want to deliver back on the grid. In greenhouses, where you actually want to grow these tulips and actually use less fossil fuels to heat them in warehouses where there is an excess of solar capacity and old natural gas heaters, which basically are very expensive to run. It makes sense. And all of this was with open source design. So we put, published everything on the internet and everybody on the planet is using our drawings to build these things and actually increase the perfection of these systems themselves. We are at version 18 or something like that now, and we have all different design types uh, readily available to just implement. So what is going to happen in the next couple of years? And we can already see that in the generation of electricity in the Netherlands. We are moving towards renewable energy, and we are one of the fastest running horses. And it's going very rapidly. This means that there's a lot of intermittent power. 
And this intermittent power is in excess. So currently, we shut down solar parks, we shut down our windmills just to be able to stabilize the grid. And that doesn't have to be this way. We could use this electricity, we could use it with Bitcoin mining and buffer this heat to actually grow food or have it for industrial purposes. And this is what we are working on currently. It's large scale, but also at home scale, as you just saw. So how does this look? If you just look at Germany, the Netherlands, Belgium, Denmark, all together with the UK, the amount of wind energy that's going to come online in 2030 is really, really insane. So it more than doubled the ac actual capacity of electricity we currently use in this region. That means that there's a lot more intermittent power available and it will look more and more like Texas already is. And if you look at Texas, there are multiple gigawatts already running there to make sure that the grid stays balanced and this excess electricity is actually being paid for so you can actually build out your renewables faster. And that's what we've been working on for the past couple of years. We've built open source with home assistant connections to the miners where we can actually on excess voltage or on excess electricity automatically steer based on price, shut down and on-ramp these machines. So actually we stabilize the grid, we heat and use this excess electricity that is currently available. And that's scaling up and it's scaling up rapidly. So if you look what is currently happening is that at the largest greenhouses on the planet, they are in the Netherlands, they are already being supplied with heat from Bitcoin miners. And if you look at the little container standing there in this little movie, you're talking about 2.8 megawatts of heat in a little 40-foot container. Insane energy density, which actually is turned off when there's no excess electricity. And when there is excess, we buffer the heat in the tank you see on the left side in the movie. So we actually use the heat in the night, but we can buffer this. And these kind of technologies are not yet on industrial scale available. And that makes it interesting because in the industry where heat is necessary, this buffering principle that's used by farmers can actually decouple uh, the energy needs. And that means that we can, with Bitcoin mining, apart from balancing the grid, we can also use this heat decoupled uh, in, in purposes for industry. And that's what we are currently working on. So it started all, of course, a bit smaller scale, but now it's scaling up massively, as you can see. Next to that, a lot of test sites have been on the smaller scale um, solar infrastructure. So a lot of uh, solar has been deployed in the Netherlands and they can't deliver back on the grid. So what has been tested for the last couple of years is that these miners, they run and they shut down when there's actually need for electricity, but they also ramp up when there's excess. And uh, they are becoming more and more uh, available uh, across the Netherlands. We see more and more people diving into this. And because we share with a large group, hundreds of people, uh, hundreds of people are actually mining in the Netherlands. They share this information together, and that's how we build out further and often, of course, again, repurpose the heat. Now, we are currently also seeing this decentralization moment on a movement on a small scale with Bitex Supras. And it's not, a, not just important for decentralizing the network, it's also learning. As you can see, people in South Africa and El Salvador are learning what Bitcoin mining is. Super important. And with every $5 donation we do with the Bitexes, we make this possible. A lot of people attend the lottery. Every 10 minutes, there's a block. It costs you 13 cents a day. And you have one billionth of the hash rate of the global Bitcoin network. And once we have one million of these little machines running, every week, someone will win the lottery. And 200K in euros, it's a nice win every week. The chance is incredibly small. Every 10 minutes, you have one in a billion chance, but as you know the meme, so you're telling me there's a chance, right? So you want to join this movement. It's really fun, and actually, we decentralize the network. And then, if you look, you can also use it for lightning. A couple of cents a day, 
100 days, you will mine a cup of coffee, you have direct payments, great privacy. Actually, it makes sense now to mine for these smaller amounts, and actually with renewables, you can switch on and off, and you actually get paid. So it might make sense just to get some, in case it catches on. If enough people think the same way, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And then, as the last little spoiler alert that I already told in Antwerp, we are growing quite some food now, on large scale. If you go to a supermarket in Europe, you might actually have a tomato in your hands that's heated by Bitcoin. So, eat up. <laughs> And it's not just tomatoes. And we created a little movie for it because we want to show the world that Bitcoin is not bad, it's actually good. So, we are standing here at the largest pepper growing greenhouse on our planet. And the chance that if you buy a pepper in Europe, that it's a Bitcoin pepper is insanely high. that these machines here in the Netherlands are supplying freedom for hundreds of millions of people so they can actually use their money uh, whatever they see fit. So everyone, let's decentralize the network and we'll see each other at the bit extent. Thank you all. Welcome back, everybody. We are here at the Bitcoin Magazine News Desk at Bitcoin Amsterdam. I am Frank Corber, the business and political correspondent for Bitcoin Magazine. I'm joined by Alejandro de la Torre, CEO of Demand Pool, and Aaron Von Weirdem, editor-in-chief of Bitcoin Magazine and author of The Genesis Book. Alejandro, we just heard Bert de Groot talking about really important ways to uh, decentral or really creative ways in which miners are using excess heat, um, how they're decentralizing the hash rate. Your takeaway, what are miners doing that sort of a creative use of some of the energy that they're producing, some of the heat that's being produced from mining. Well, Bert is a great example of that, Bitcoin Brabant. They, they actually heat flowers, like tulips, mm. which is an ironic uh, flower to heat. Yeah. But I've heard of uh, heating of mangoes, like dried mangoes, beef jerky. You know, at the end of the day, the miner tries to find different revenue sources. Amazing. Yeah. And Aaron, we were just talking a little bit before about the importance of decentralizing the hash rate. Do you want to weigh on, on, in, on, in on that at all? Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, the only way Bitcoin can be censorship resistant is for it to be truly decentralized, to have no sort of choke point for authorities to kind of, you know, choke it off. Right. Uh, so, yeah, mining decentralization, and that's hardware decentralization, yep. pool decentralization. Uh, I'm forgetting one. Yeah, chip manufacturing. Well, that that's a big challenge right. still, chip manufacturing decentralization. Uh, it's all necessary for Bitcoin to actually work as intended. Yeah. And you mentioned a little bit earlier, you mentioned the solo pool for miners who want to maybe come online, demand pool, solo pool. Could you maybe give a little bit of details about what, what that is for maybe people who aren't familiar with what a mining pool is? Yeah, for sure. So a mining pool aggregates hash rate and gives you a bigger chance of finding Bitcoin, the, the block reward. Right. Um, Stratum, the, the pool that I've built is Stratum V2, which helps decentralize the network, which is on the uh, ethos of what Iron was talking about. Yep. Absolutely.
your company ready for the next evolution in financial strategy? Bitcoin for Corporations is your partner in securing the future of your business. With exclusive membership benefits, our comprehensive masterclass, and a network of trusted service providers, we provide the insights and resources to help you incorporate Bitcoin into your financial strategy, ensuring stability and long-term value. Strengthen your business. Innovate with confidence. Bitcoin for Corporations, protecting your treasury and positioning you for the future.